Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you how to build an absolutely foolproof lookup table in Microsoft Excel. Excel has a ton of capabilities, but most of us use only a few of them. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use one or two more you can add to your repertoire and use whenever you need them. I'm doing this in Excel version 2016, but this feature applies to many earlier versions as well. Let me first show you what the finished version looks like. This spreadsheet provides a simple calculation of charges for printing. You can see over here on the right is a table showing the types of printing to be done and the cost per sheet for each type. Over here on the left in our data entry area, we have a simple drop-down selector, what Microsoft calls a list box from which we select the type of printing. Once I select the type of printing from the drop-down, and enter the number of copies, the total fee for that print job is calculated automatically and all the lines are added together here in the running charge box with an easy to read total shown at the top. Let's get started building our selector and making it foolproof. We start, of course, with a blank spreadsheet. I always like to add a title at the top, so if I come back to this spreadsheet two hours later or two years later, I know just what it is. Next, I want to outline my data entry area. I'll add six columns, date, description, number copies, type of copies, line charge, and running charge. Now I'll format the data entry area just to make it easy to work with. I'll be back soon as that's done. Thanks to the magic of video editing, you didn't have to sit through all the time that took. Now it's time to add the source data table. I build this one with two columns, the type job and the price. You'll notice I format some cells on my worksheets with colored backgrounds. This is my indicator to myself that I should not enter data into these cells because they either contain labels or formulas. Now, with both the data areas built, it's time to perform some magic. The first piece of magic is building the selector dropdown. We want the spreadsheet user to have their selection in this column limited to only those values in the first column of the source data table. To do this, click on a cell where you want the drop down, then on the ribbon bar, select the data tab, then select data validation. In the data validation dialog, click the settings tab if it's not already selected, then select allow list. Next, find the source field and click on the selector control to drag select all the values you want to show up in your selector. Then click the I'm done selector to take you back to the data validation dialog. Notice that in the range you selected, the source value now not only has the range you selected, it also has dollar signs in front of each row and column, which means you can copy this selector and paste it anywhere in your spreadsheet. Be sure the ignore blank and in cell drop down boxes are checked, then click OK. Now spreadsheet users will be restricted to entering in any cell with this selector only those values from the source table. Now we simply copy and paste this selector into all the cells in that column of the data entry table. The next step is to use that selector to help us fill in our data. In this example, I'm showing the charges for the number of copies of printing, but this concept is very easily portable to almost any other subject. The objective is to take the type of copies as selected in the dropdown, then go find the match over here in the source data table, get the charge for that type of printing, multiply that charge by the number of copies from this column, and put the result here in the line total column and to do this automatically for every line entered no matter how many lines of data we have. Doing all this is very simple with Excel's VLOOKUP function. We start by putting the cursor in the cell where we want the final value to go. You can type the function in manually if you want, but I'm going to use Excel's function builder. To use the builder, click the Insert Function button, which brings up the Insert Function dialog. If the function you want in this case, VLOOKUP is not immediately visible in the Select a Function section. Just type it in up top. VLOOKUP. There we go. 
Click to select it, then click OK. In the Function Arguments dialog, the fields are presented in the order they need to be passed to the function, so if you manually type it in later, you'll know what the arguments should look like. For VLOOKUP, the first argument is the lookup value. This is the value from our drop-down box in the data entry table. To enter this as an argument, click the Go Select control, click once on your drop-down box, be sure it's the one on the same line where you're entering the formula, then click the I'm done button. You'll notice the value in this argument has no dollar signs on the row or column numbers, which means it can be transferred to other rows. The next argument is table array. The table array must include not only the column that has the value we're trying to match, it must also include the value you want to return. So if your source data table has 15 columns and the lookup data you want is in column 14, that's OK. Just include all the columns in your table array up to the column that includes the value you want to return. Our example here is simple because there are only two columns. Here I click the Go Select button, select all the rows and columns in the data table, then click the I'm done button. The third argument you need is the number of the column with the data you want to return. In this case, we want the price, which is in column 2, so we enter 2. The final argument is optional, and we don't need it. It simply allows us to specify whether we want an exact match, and since we're getting our values from a drop-down box that has the same source, it will always be an exact match. That's why I call this a foolproof lookup table. That's it. Click OK. At this point, all we have done is brought in the per copy price from the source data table. But now we want to multiply that per copy price times the number of copies. To do this, simply click in the formula edit bar above the spreadsheet and edit the formula to add times the asterisk and click on the cell with the number of copies. Again, making sure you're in the same row. Notice how the formula now reads your VLOOKUP formula times the cell with the number of copies. Press enter and we now have the proper cost for that number of copies for that type of printing. Using Excel's drag copy function, I can now drag my modified VLOOKUP formula down through the entire cost column and my data entry table is complete. Now it's on to the formatting, which will do such things as make it look pretty and get rid of all these obscure error messages, but that's a topic for another video. I'd love to hear how you use this foolproof lookup table. Leave us a comment to share with others how you use it. They might get some good ideas from you. Also, please give us a thumbs up if you thought this tutorial was worth one. Share it on social media and be sure to subscribe to be notified when we post a new great video from David's Tutorials.